the work of finding the graves of children is always heartbreaking. I specialize in the ground penetrating radar, but there are a lot of other things that go into understanding where children might be buried around a residential school landscape. Keisha Supernet is one of the only Indigenous archaeologists in Canada. For the last few months, her work has been at the centre of a national reckoning. In May, an Indigenous community in Kamloops, British Columbia found more than 200 likely graves of children who were forced to attend a boarding school for Indigenous kids. The next month, 751 more were found in Saskatchewan. The discovery sparked a hunt for unmarked graves in other sites, like this one near a former hospital. When we're looking for unmarked graves, we want to make sure that we're covering every part of the ground. And we'll pull this along and then move 25 centimeters over and pull it along. Like all, mowing a lawn. Like mowing a lawn. Yeah. So as you walk, it starts to build a picture of what's happening. You know, so that between like here and here, something's different in the soil. We can get a hint of it here. Then we take it back, we download the data, we do some analysis, and then we can say, okay, this looks like a grave. After the news out of Kamloops, everybody wanted that work to start. I'm doing my best to help as many communities as I can. It feels like we've only just scratched the surface. Yes, no school ground has been fully searched yet. No investigation is anywhere near being complete. So we have barely, barely scratched the surface and there are thousands of graves left to search and to investigate and to understand. For more than a century, Indigenous children across Canada and the U.S. were forced to attend residential boarding schools, funded by the government and primarily run by churches. In Canada, lawmakers were explicit about their goals to, quote, get rid of the Indian problem. Children were cut off from their families and traditions, they were also punished for speaking their native languages. By the time the last school closed in the mid-1990s, an estimated 150,000 children had gone through the system. Thousands of them were never seen again. In recent years, the Canadian government has begun to acknowledge the horrors of that time. But this year's discoveries are forcing many to face the full scale of the repression and brutality of the schools. Back there in the back, we weren't allowed to go. Boys wandered all over, but they shouldn't have. And back here, believe it or not, we actually had a pool back here in the 50s. They built it in the 50s when I was here. Roberta Hill was only six years old when she was taken to the Mohawk Institute in 1957, along with five of her siblings. See all these names up here? They'd have this fire escape come all the way down here, and that's why you see all those up there, because when you're coming down the fire escape, you could reach those bricks. So I know, I know some of them names. So you know the girls who wrote them? I know the Lillian and Barb. Barb's still my, my sister's best friend. Lillian, she passed away. She was married, had children, and she just um, committed suicide. I'm sorry. Mm. She was nice. I liked Lillian. And that's what people have to understand. They look at us as <laughs> old survivors, right? Think of us when we were little. We were little guys, you know? Parents weren't told, here's what we're gonna do to your kids when you, you know, you drop your kids off. Here's what we're really gonna do to them. That's not spoken of. They tell you that we're gonna feed your children, we're gonna look after them, we're gonna educate them. And so it's, it's very false and misleading what they were saying because that is not the truth. What is it like to come back here to this place? I'd been away from here, like away from this, this particular site for so many years, I just didn't bother with it. It could be just a cruel place, and so you have to know how to really stick up for yourself. You know, you're a little kid. You don't have any adults to protect you. Adults can do what they want. The Mohawk Institute was run by the Anglican Church. And when Roberta was there, its headmaster was a popular reverend named John Zimmerman. Can you tell me about Zimmerman? Oh yeah, he's a pig. Um, he, you know, he could put on a good front, let's say that, to the people in Brantford and to all of the outside world. He was, he was like a saint. He had a good reputation in Brantford. He even had an honorary Indian name. Nobody knew what he was doing here in this building. Nobody, they would have been shocked. The one time that my mom came to visit us, I sat on her lap and I'll, my whole visit was crying. You know, I was just so happy that she was there. 
After that visit, though, Zimmerman came and he took me over to his office and he sat me on his lap. And that's where the abuse started after that. And then after a while, it escalated into much worse than that and uh, became a sexual assault. I don't want to go into graphics with that one, but that was the first time he assaulted me. How old were you? When that happened, I wasn't in my first year, so I'd have to say probably seven, seven or eight around there. From that point on, you know, you know what he's capable of doing. And this is the guy that you'll never get past this minister because he has, he has all the authority even over your parents pretty much. Most of us don't talk or never talked about it to our families. So it stayed inside of us and that's why they got away with it. You know? Zimmerman, like many others who wielded power in the schools, died without facing his accusers. But in 2008, Canada launched a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to look into the schools. Its final report in 2015 found that sexual assault was rampant, as were physical abuse and malnutrition. It also said that the system amounted to cultural genocide. But there are many things the report simply couldn't answer, including a final count of how many children died and how they died. You know, I'm a big believer in the phrase, no truth, no reconciliation. So there does need to be a, uh, an acceptance and a, a, and a reckoning with the history. Wab Kanu is an opposition lawmaker and the son of a residential school survivor. He believes the commission's work should be just the beginning of a process of accountability. I grew up with a residential school survivor and it was only through some pretty unique, remarkable events like the government of Canada apologizing to him, like a national commission of inquiry into truth and reconciliation, that I actually was able to hear about the horrific things that he experienced when he was young. Who needs to still be held accountable? You know, I think the governments uh, are accountable. The government shouldn't be leading the searches, but they should be supporting them with the resources. It has to be Indigenous-led to ensure that it's trauma-informed and it puts the survivors front and center. But the governments, which in many cases help to perpetrate this, should definitely foot the bill. This summer, the Canadian government earmarked $83 million for the search for bodies. But Indigenous leaders say that's not enough and are asking for a full, independent investigation into the deaths at the schools. They also want the government to address one of the major findings of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, that Indigenous kids continue to be taken away from their parents, but now through the foster care system. Today, Indigenous children make up more than half of those in foster care, despite being just 8% of the country's youth. With the Truth and Reconciliation Report, the very first call to action was reduce the number of Indigenous children in foster care. Do you see that happening? No, things seem to be getting worse. I would say the child welfare system is a result of the re residential school system. Um, and specifically the overrepresentation of Indigenous children in child welfare systems. The family and personal lives of Indigenous people were so disrupted for so long that there is just this tremendous impact on the lives of people that continues right to this day. The residential school system is actually very successful. I don't know if anybody's looked at how many kids never returned home, how many children that may have had their languages, their culture, you know, traditions, ceremonies, don't have it when they left here. I just think that they were very effective in doing what they were doing. Yeah, Canada talks a lot about truth and reconciliation. Well, we get, we're still working on that truth. Yeah. And I think that's where we are with reconciliation. Once we do all this and we find out all of the truths, then we'll talk about reconciliation.